Hey friends, gather around boys and girls. It is story time and I did let y'all choose the story that I tell. And my followers don't cut no corners, honey. I already knew what y'all was gonna pick. Like I gave y'all three choices. Worst first date. What was the second one? Oh, I got cheated on. And the sugar daddy story. So I know y'all may say this is no true the sugar daddy story. And that's cool because I don't mind telling it, honey. It's an interesting story. So a couple things I want to say before I get into the gist of the story. Now, this was not my first rodeo. This was not my first sugar daddy. However, this was my first experience on this particular website. Um, and it's also the riskiest situation that I probably put myself in ever in my life. So I'm going to share this with y'all because don't try this at home. It could have went a completely and totally different way. So um, just a little backstory on the situation. Um, a few of my homegirls and me was at one of their apartments a while back, some years ago. Um, and she was talking about this website called Seeking Arrangements where she met this guy and basically she was screening him to be her sugar daddy. So we all interested like, okay, well, let's see. Now at this time I hadn't started dancing or nothing like that. So I wasn't really um, introduced to that world at, at the time that I made the profile. So fast forward a few years later, by this time I done danced and stopped dancing um, <clears throat> and, and got what I call my finesse game. I got my finesse game up. Um, so by this time, I'm, it's no, I'm no stranger to getting money from niggas cause I was doing it as one of my jobs, stripping. So now randomly I got a message from a user from the Seeking Arrangements website and he, you know, was, he was interested. So we start talking. Um, now it's not uncommon for the sugar daddies on the website to have, um, like no pictures of their face because usually these are, um, these are like pre prestigious men, I guess you can say corporate men, you know, they don't really want their job and you know, the general public knowing that they a trick. So, you know, he didn't have any face pictures up, but I did entertain the conversation until he sent me face pictures. Now, from what I did see on the pictures that he did have up, he was generally attractive. You know what I'm saying? I could tell he was tall. He had a fit build. Um, he was very clean cut, um, very well dressed. Um, and what also caught my attention about him, he was a black man and he wasn't that old. You know, when you think sugar daddy, you, you usually think, you know, 65, 70, you know, about to kick the bucket it a day now. No, this was a lively middle-aged African-American man. So I'm interested. <laughs> I mean, to say the least, he could have approached me on the street, honey. And I would have been like, hello, how you doing? Let's get to know each other. So I'm like, mm, I'm, I'm intrigued. So I see the face pictures. He's gorgeous, cute as ever. So we start talking off of the website. So fast forward, um, you know, by this time he's already expressed to me that he's looking for a travel partner, um, which is right on my alley because I like to travel and I love it when it's on somebody else's dime. So this could work. So we talk, um, you know, we kind of build a rapport, get comfortable, get to know each other a little better. Um, so we decide to meet for lunch. So we meet for lunch. We went to Bistro Byron's on Government Street. And he, of course, he sent me money for my Uber. And he sent me money for my Uber back to where I was going. So at this point, he didn't already sent me money to at least, you know, come to where he was at. So we chilling. Um, we having lunch. We get there. And I get there. The vibe is... You know, the same as pretty much as it was when we was texting and we was talking on the phone. He's really cool. We vibing in person. That is a plus. So it's like, even though, you know what I'm saying, it's a sugar daddy and I'm supposed to be finessing, it didn't really feel like I was finessing. You know what I'm saying? If that makes sense. I, I was I was kind of getting to know somebody that I was genuinely interested in, even though it would be an arrangement. So 
lunch goes great um and by the end of lunch you know he's we about to part ways so he presented me with the idea of going to miami so he's like i want to take you to miami this weekend and i'm like um you know i don't know i'm kind of apprehensive because i don't know this guy like that you know what i'm saying we just met a few days ago on a website and now you want me to fly 12 hours away with you nigga i'm not doing that like but this is where you got to be a big girl and you, you put on your big girl pants and you use your discernment to decide if, like, I mean, like I said, this, I, by this point in time in my life, I could pick a joke out of cause that, you know what I'm saying? I've, I've learned how to vet me and I could tell when, the, I, you know what I'm saying? I, if I get a creep vibe or if I feel like, you know, a nigga just looking for a cheap thrill or something like that, like, I know how to, you know what I'm saying? I know how to bust out, you know, it just, it ain't. You can tell when somebody bullshitting you, period. You know, that's just life in general. It ain't got nothing to do with sugar. And you know when somebody is bullshit. So I use my discernment, you know what I'm saying? And he he's he was a nice man. So I'm like, fuck it. I'ma go for it. I say, okay, um, we can go. I'm down. So we part ways and we were talking later on that night. Um, and he sent, you know, he confirmed he's like, Well, I'm about to get the ticket, so you know, you show you sure you you gonna be able to go. So I'm like, Yeah, I'm down. Let's, you know, let's do it. So then he got the tickets. He sent me the confirmation. So the tickets booked, you know what I'm saying? He sent me, he kept me in the know and everything. And that was something that I really appreciated as well. Um, it was, I, he showed me everything. Like he showed me confirmation of everything. Like I could tell that he was trying to gain my trust. Um, so that, you know, that was a plus. Um, he also sent me money to go shopping before the trip to make sure that I had everything that I needed to be comfortable before we when where we was going girl so it's like i don't know i'm telling my friends about it and i'm like what y'all think they like bitch you crazy but be careful so of course i share my location with my friends and stuff like that and definitely i sent my friends all his information like i wasn't i was i took the chance but i wasn't taking no chances so he picks me up um that thursday we was leaving he picked me up and we rode to the airport in New Orleans and like he didn't take me and go chop my body up in the back row and it go out nowhere like that. Um, you know, I, I made it to New Orleans in one piece. Um, he was a perfect gentleman. We get on the flight. Um, perfect gentleman. The whole flight, we was, was, we was really flying to where he said we was flying to. So... Here we are, you know what I'm saying? I'm on a plane at this point. I have not yet been sex trafficked. So that is a good sign. So we land in Fort Lauderdale. Um, he gets the rental car to drive us to Miami, which is like 45 minutes outside Fort Lauderdale. Um, and I made it in one piece from Fort Lauderdale to Miami. We get to the hotel. The hotel is gorgeous. Like, I'm a hood bitch. And it took everything in me for to not be acting like I ain't never had shit. Okay? Because this hotel was beautiful. Like, it was nice. He got, he got us like the presidential sky. Girl. <laughs> Honey, like, I feel rich, bitch. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, what? I done got out the hood, honey. Period. So, I'm excited. But like I said, you got to keep your composure, girl. You can't, you can't be acting like you ain't never had shit. <laughs> So we get there, we change clothes, uh, we hit the club, we go out to eat, like we on the strip. He, the hotel is on Ocean Drive. Like I said, I'm, <laughs> I'm living lavish, honey. I'm very rich at this time on this man's dime. I look fabulous. He looks fabulous. I'm dining in the finest. I'm VIP in the clubs. Like it's he got it going on, honey. He is really treating a bitch. So now I know y'all want to get down to the tea. So we're gonna get down to the tea, girl. So we go back to the room for a little nightcap, and there's a jacuzzi on our balcony. Like I said, honey, we rich. We rich this weekend, girl. So we in a jacuzzi and we vibing, you know what I'm saying? Like nothing too sexual at that, you know, at that point. Um, but we vibing and you know he's attracted to me i'm attracted to him so you know eventually we take you to the bedroom and i know y'all want to know if i fucked him and i did but i will say i did because i wanted to i did not have sex with him because i felt like oh he didn't bought this for me or 
you know, he didn't brought me out here, so I felt obligated to have sex with him. No, there was no pressure. When I say he was completely and totally a gentleman, he was completely and totally a gentleman. I didn't have to do anything that I did not want to do. So, that being said, um, now as far as the sex, it was okay. Um, the head was, the head, the head was really good. Um, but as far as the sex, mm, it was quick. Um, but he knew that and he had expressed that and he had told me that he would make up for it in other ways and of which he, he did. So I had no complaints. So moving forward, um, we were there for a couple more days. Um, like I said, you know, the next day we go shopping, we go out to eat wherever the fuck I want to eat. We did whatever the fuck I wanted to do. Um, I had an amazing time. He was, he was perfect. Like to say the least, he was absolutely perfect. And you know, we came back from Miami and we never got to go on another trip, unfortunately, but, um, you know, I, I was still talking to him for a little while after that. And, um, he was paying for things for me and sending me money when I needed or, you know, wanted money and stuff like that. He would take care of stuff for me. So, you know, but I kind of ghosted our boy, you know, I kind of go I ghosted our boy Jeffrey. That's what I'm gonna call him. I ghosted Jeffrey and because I got a boyfriend and it just started getting too hard. It, it was just too hard having a sugar daddy and having like an actual relationship it just, I, and I thought I was in love, girl. And by then, shit, I was already spending my boyfriend money. So, you know, sorry. Jeff wasn't like trying to be, he wasn't like, Jeff wasn't trying to fall in love with me. Jeff just wanted to spend money on me and take me on trips. But no, my dumb ass chose love over money, girl. And I ghosted Jeff. And then like when me and the boy ain't work out, girl, I lay around there and I tried to talk back to Jeff and Jeff said, look for me. So I guess he moved on and he found him somebody else, but I just, I wish him the best and I really enjoy telling the story and I thank him for the free trip because girl, that man could have took me to the middle of Montana somewhere and chopped my body up and fed me to Wolverine, bitch. If you probably would have, you could have never fucking seen me again and he did not kill me. So thank you so much, Jeffrey for not killing me.